led not, by our high school. I'm going to get my computer and try to. Well, Shabbat Shalom. Hi, Rabbi. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. We begin this evening in song. We do so, um, if people need a live transcript, you can hit on the bottom of your screen where you can see then the ability to have a transcript this evening. Don't pay attention to how it transcribes the Hebrew. It will lead you astray, but just be able to follow along with us. Also, we'll say in this service that you can rise in spirit so that that way you can rise in whichever way you do. All of us will rise with our hearts. Some of us will embody the way that we rise and others of us will remain seated. But of course, we'll all be one community together tonight. Oh, how we need this Shabbat. Hmm. Page 657, if you must. Or just let your heart take you away. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, oh, hey yo, hey yo. I think Rabbi Conover had just the right physical response. It was like this, ah, like a little like ganoof enough. Ah. I liked it. So whenever we sing this, hey, yo, hey, yo, I like when we just throw everything off and say, oh, and let it all go. So you can throw your hands back. Here we go. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. hearing that song from a stage in Israel, uh, just outside of Tel Aviv. And there were, I was in there on this, uh, this festival called the Bereshit Festival. And there was Sheva on a stage singing that song. And it was, the year was 1999. And we were waiting for 2002 K and we thought maybe the world was going to end in the year 2000. And I feel like we go through these times in our lives where it feels like, is this world going to keep on going? Are we ever going to lift ourselves out of these cycles of violence and pain and destruction? Will we be able to get through? And so we sing these songs, O Javo Shalom Aleinu. Yes, O Javo, it will come. It will come because we are in our hearts. We are not only people who search for peace. We're not only people who pray for peace. We're known as Road Face Shalom, which means pursuers of peace. That means that we don't just pray, we look to see how can we bring peace to this world? And I have to say, as we gather as one community on this Shabbat, what a difficult week. 
We start this week with Bamidbar. We open this new book in the Torah, which is a book whose name means in the wilderness. Doesn't it feel like we are wandering through this wilderness that's filled with violence and darkness and ways of people not seeing each other? And so then we're reminded that the very word that is the name Jerusalem, that as we our hearts turn toward the east, Yerushalem means to be able to see peace. And in fact, Jerusalem isn't how you say it in, in Hebrew. The way you say Jerusalem in Hebrew is Yerushalayim, which means that there are two, that there is a heavenly Jerusalem and there's an earthly Jerusalem. And that on Shabbat, what do we do? But we try to see a peace in which our earthly Jerusalem could be more like that heavenly Jerusalem, just filled with peace, emanating light. And I wanna share that I think that the way that we go from here, here on earth in this time of great turmoil and violence, how do we go from here to be able to behold peace, to see peace? I think it's by seeing each other. More than that, I think it's by seeing all of us, seeing one, an, uh, one another, and not just posting about our opinions of a situation, but being able to see one another in these situations. See that one of the most impactful things that I read this week was from someone who was writing, who recently made Aliyah, a young person who said in a letter to my American friends, she wrote, as I pull out my phone and start scrolling down through Instagram, as it was 3 a.m. and she was in a bomb shelter in Tel Aviv. She says, I see everyone posting on the conflict here, a subject that is so sensitive and so real for me. There's an outpouring of strong opinions on the situation filled with passionately argued politics, some of which in normal times I share, yet more often than not, these social media posts feel conditioned and predictable. And in this moment, they entirely miss the point. When I see friends posting stories, but not reaching out to me to see if I am okay, I start crying. I fear we have far too often removed compassion from our activism, the individual from our cause. And then she urges, Think about human beings going through something you have probably never experienced. Let's take this time to reach out to individuals who are affected by violence or oppression anywhere. Activism is important and necessary, but let's also remember to take care of one another. So I've spent a lot of this week myself reaching out to my friends in Israel reaching out to my Palestinian friends who are also suffering. And for us in that way, then as we see each other, as we pursue peace in our own relationships, well, this is how then God willing, we become a community of peace. And also that we're able to see that Yerushalayim shall mata, that this Jerusalem, this earthly Jerusalem can be more like Yerushalayim Shamala, like the Jerusalem on high, filled with peace and light and love. Salam, salam, aleinu ve'al kol ha'olam, salam, salam. Hey-oh, 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 oh.
Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi. Shabbat Shalom. And we can take some moments now to, in the chat, either here on Zoom or on Facebook, to wish each other Shabbat Shalom, uh, Shabbat filled with peace, God willing. And we know that as we're looking toward where do we get the vision of peace, where do we get the vision for the future we want to behold? Well, right now we have these extraordinary leaders in our teens who are going to be leading the service. We have some who are graduating who are going to share their deep and beautiful reflections with us tonight. Wow, that's another way that we see each other and that we see the future we want to behold, one filled with light. And so to do us the honor this evening of beginning our Shabbat with light, we invite Esther Fishbein to lead us in the candle lighting. I might, Esther, I might be the person who's going to light them behind me, and you'll be the person to lead us in the blessing, please. Wonderful. Will do. Okay. Ready? Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kidshanu B'Mitzvotav, Vitzivanu Lahadlich Ner Shal Shabbat. Thank you, Esther. Amen. Esther, thank you for all the light and beauty you bring into our community. We are so very grateful. And with that, I'll invite another great leader um, in, our, in our lifelong learning, and that is Jay Rappaport to lead us in Kiddush. And again, we have uh, here, we have uh, our our kiddish, and I know that some of us really love, including us here at home, we'd love to be able to see uh, that cup filter into all those smaller cups, seeing how sweetness might filter into the world, let's hope. And so, um, so Jay uh, Rappaport, if you would lead us in Kiddush. Oh, well, you're the, I love what you That's have. Perfect. Who needs that? Who needs our visual when you have that? Ruthie, this is perfection. Page 123. Baruch atzad anai, Eloheinu melech halam, borei peri hagafen. I don't know how long we can be unmuted here, sorry. You're not unmuted, we hear you. No, it's just, it's loud. Oh, I see, okay, go ahead. Was that it? Do you want me to continue with the rest of it? Please continue with the okay, rest of it. Okay, Kate. okay. Baruch Atarunai Eloheinu Melch HaOlam Asher Kiddushanu B'Mitzvata V'Ratzava Nu V'Shabbat Kodcho V'Yahava U'V'Ratzon Hin Chilanu Zikaron Namasei V'Reshit Ki Hu Yom Tilchilal Mikroi Kodesh Zechel Etziat Mitzrayim Kivanu Balchata Vyotanu Kidashta Mikol Hamim Veshabhat Kodshecha Veyahava Uvratzon thank you thank you jay and your whole family the sacrifices that you make for our community thank you so much oh yes <laughs> and also the ways that you're able to uh, build the kind of community that you are so proud to lead, to raise your children in. We love that you make you both make sacrifices and you also get a lot out of the community that you're building and we're grateful for all of that. Thank you, Jay. And as we turn now to page 138 and 139, we sing Lecha Dodi and we imagine how we could have the kind of beauty and love come into our lives as the Sabbath bride enters in the final verse on verse nine. And so tonight we'll be singing verses one, two, five, and then nine. 
And may I just call myself out tonight, Rabbi, because I think it'll make somebody that's watching and with us this evening feel even more comfortable that I am going to rise in spirit this evening myself. So for those of you who are with me, pray along. <laughs> Rabbi Conover to our angels. I just love it. And I'll tell you that I, I often think about these Sabbath angels as messengers of peace. And I was, I was thinking back to something that I heard this week, uh, something that was unique, an unexpected Sabbath angel, an unexpected messenger of peace. And that was somebody who has a shop in Ramla, uh, whose shop there has a, has a lot of Judaica. And so um, there was somebody who was interviewing this person because his, his, uh, his shop, there had been a, something happened to the window. Somebody threw a rock through the window. It had been torched. And so they said, you know, you, what are people going to do? They, they can't come in there anymore. And he said, and they said, you know, when you have Jewish customers, but of course, you know, the Muslims, they don't, they wouldn't come in there anyway. And he said, you're wrong. They come in before every Jewish holiday, the people of Ramla, the people who are living in this town. And the Muslims who live there, they, they get their, their neighbors who are Jewish. They want to get them little tokens to be able to give to them before these Jewish holidays. And he said, so I know that you think that I'm going to tell you those stories that we're all telling each other about how, you know, we, we were against Arabs or were this. And he said, that's not the case. In Ramla, we know that actually what's happening right now is impermanent, but the friendship and the love and the peace we have for one another, that's what's going to win the day. And so on this Shabbat, let's think about those messengers of peace, and let's hope that they get sent all over the world, and especially to Israel. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharit, Malachi Elyon. Mi 
melech malche hamlachim hakadosh baruchu Malachem le shalom, malachem le shalom, malachem le shalom, malachem le shalom, hakadosh baruchu. Baruchu ni le shalom, malachem le shalom, malachem Melech malhe amlachim hakadosh baruchu. Seitzchem le shalom malachi hashalom malachi elion. Mi melech malhe amlachim hakadosh baruchu. Page 146, for a who we rise in spirit. Lai, 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 Will you lead us in the watchword of our faith, the Shema? You can find it on page 152. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Shema Rahel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai. Thank you so much as Bela Cohn leads us in the Vea Hafta. Page 154. Okay, can you hear me? All right. The Avta Etaruna, Eloheha, the whole of Afa, Ubehon of Shaha, Ubehom El Deha, the Hayu, Hagarim, Ha Ela, Asher and Ohim, it's of Ha, Hayom, Oliva Veha, Shina Tam, Livaneha, Viti by Tam, Pam, Bishif de Ha, Beveteha, who left a Ha, Badera, who shot the Ha, Ufumeha. Try Tom the old Taya de Hap, the Hayulit Tatafo, Bene Neha, Uftafta, Amazuzo Peteha, Uvi Shareha. The man tis Keru, Vasi Tem, et Comito Tai, Peter Nushim, Lohem. I need I don't know, Lohem. I shall say, Tia Kem, Merit meets Rahim, Lahio Lahem, Lohim. I need I don't know, Lohem. Met. And with open hearts on our way toward freedom, toward liberation, toward amazing and enduring peace, we invite Esther to lead us in the Micha Mocha, page 158. <laughs>
Lord. Oh, say, oh, say, anyone who's felt a sense of vulnerability this week, for anyone who's felt a sense of fear, for anyone who's felt a sense of loneliness, we ask God to spread a shelter of peace over us and over every person in the world. We turn to Hashki Venu on page 160. Hashki Venu Adonai Eloheinu Leshalom Vehamidenu Shomreinu Lechaim Hashki Venu Adonai Eloheinu Leshalom Vehamidenu Shomreinu Lechaim we rise in body and in spirit. We turn to our Amida, our central prayer on page 164. Adonai sifa taitif tahu fia gita hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruchata Adonai, Eloheinu, Velohe Avotenu, Bimotenu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Velohe Yaakov. Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leia, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor, Hanora, El Elyon, Gomel, Chasadim Tovim, Vekone Hakol, Vezoher, Chaseavot, Vimahot, Umevi Gulali, Vene, Vene Ham, Leman Shmo, Biahava. Melacho zeu moshiau magen Baruch ata Adonai Magen Avraham v'ezrat Sara Ata gibor le'olam Adonai Mechaye hakol ata rab l'hoshia Morid hatal Mechakel chayim v'chesed Mechaye hakol v'rachamim rabim So mech noflim v'rofech oholim Umati Rasurim, Umakaye Mamunato, Lishene Afar, Micham Mohabal Gburot, Umido Melach, Melach me meets Umachaya, Umats me of Yeshua, Nemana Talahayot, Hakol, Baruchata, Donai, Mechaye. Hakol ata kadosh v'shimcha kadosh shukdoshim b'chol yomi halulu chasela baruch ata adonai ha'el hakadosh. We take a time a time now for silent prayer and personal reflection, a time for deep breaths, a time to try to take the worry that we've carried around with us all week and just like put it down for a few minutes. We pray silently 
When you're finished, if you're standing, you can be seated. Shalom On this Shabbat, on this day of introspection and renewal, in this moment right now of increased violence, fear, and so much rage, we pray for the strength to lift ourselves, to lift ourselves from the voices that call for more violence, more fear, more rage. We pray to see the holiness in one another, to see the humanity in the other, we grieve for all of the loss of life, the loss of innocent Israelis, the loss of innocent Palestinians. Give us more courage as we ask ourselves, what can we, yes, all of us all the way over here, 
What can we do to contribute to real lasting peace? And please give us the courage to live out that answer. We pray, Avinu Sheba Shamaim, Sur Israel Vagoalo, Barech et Medinat Israel. Source of peace, sovereign of peace, establish peace among your people, Israel. And let there be an ever increasing peace among all peoples. May there be no more hatred, rancor, strife, or conquest between one human being and another. Let there be only love among us so that each one of us may know the love of the other. Until we are able to come and gather together every person with another so that we may speak one to the other, so that we may explain one to the other your truth. God, you are peace and from you comes peace. Source of peace, bless us with peace. Amen. We take time now for anyone in the who we know or we love who could use a prayer of healing, healing of body, of spirit. Uh, please take, take a moment if you would like to unmute yourself and share their name out loud or type their name in the chat. Howard Nagelberg. Howard, Howard Nagelberg, Mike Gen Michael Genini, and Gail Rothman. Cynthia Pedlican. Max Weiner. We add to those names, Barbara Sussman, Ella Wexler, Don Sable, Pam Zolney, Jim Clemens, Kate Clemens, Ari Wilkenfeld, family of Lenita Hudgens, Elizabeth De Bruyne, Alec Jaladin, Lily Nelson, Jonathan Spitz, Elaine Baddock, Frank Gilbert, Stanley Gross, Betsy Gross, Sarah Griffith, Jerry Scanzano, Judy Arkin, Rob Coppensteiner, Sam Jacobson, Brian Britton, Candy Roller, Lori Steer, Don Dempsey, James Amick, Fletcher Kurtz, Madeline Hewage, Brian Britton, Candy Roller, Francesca Walker, Hazel Golden Lee, Ronnie and Marissa Green, Janie Scora, Sherry Silver. We send them prayers of healing as we turn to page 371 for Misha Berach. Misha Berach avoteinu makor habracha imoteinu may the source of strength who bless the ones before us. Help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. Misha Beirach Imoteinu Makor Habracha Le'avoteinu Bless those in need of healing with Rafua Shalema The renewal of body, the renewal of spirit and let us say Amen. Now take a moment to count the Omer. Cantor Ben David, I believe we're on day 48, right? We are. We are. We're on 48 days and we're on page 570. Guys, this is it for me. This is it. I become utterly useless after this night as a cantor. So take this moment in, follow me on 570, and you'll see I'm inserting special text to cover tonight at 48. I should turn to the page myself. Inani muhanum zuman le kayem, mis fara seishvel svirat haomer, 
Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Kirishanu B'mitz, Votal V'tzivanu, Asfirat HaOmer, Hayom Shmona V'arbaim, Yom Shem Shisha Shavuot, V'shisha Yamim La'Omer. Amen. We now get the honor of giving a special blessing to all of our graduates, a blessing to say, we love you. We're so proud of you. We're so glad you're here. And we can't wait to see what you're going to do next, but more importantly, who you're going to be. So we're going to take a moment to highlight all of our, all of our graduates who are with us tonight. I think even before we do that, we might hear some wisdom from a couple of our graduates. So maybe I'll just invite Eleanor Gelb to share with us her wisdom this evening. Eleanor, it's wonderful to see you. Shabbat Shalom. Um, okay, so I guess I'll just read my speech now. I'll be looking at my phone if anybody's confused and where I'm looking. Okay. I've never been able to wrap my head around the notion that there is an anthropomorphic God in the sky watching over the world. I always had too many questions. Who is this man? What is his name? Where did he come from? Who chose him? The list goes on. The spiritual doubt always put me at a standstill in my journey with my Jewish identity. I never felt as connected to the community as I assumed others felt. To this day, I still feel that way sometimes, but I know that my Jewish identity is ever changing and I am ready for that. As a child, I was never as secure in my religious identity as I am now. My, my mom was born into a Catholic family while my dad was born into a Jewish family. My parents, both being mostly secular, decided for our family to celebrate Catholic and Jewish holidays. This decision led to me having a muddled religious identity. Traditionally in Judaism, a child's mother must be Jewish for them to be Jewish, but I always felt a stronger connection to Judaism than Catholicism. So with a push from my Jewish grandfather, I got my parents to sign me up for religious school. Synagogue grew to be a place where I could be myself. To put it simply, I began to overconsume Judaism in a good way. By going to temple as much as four times a week for bar mitzvah practice, midweek Hebrew and Hebrew school, I formed connections with the most amazing people and experienced the most amazing things. Though the journey has been difficult, I would not change anything. Pursuing Judaism has pushed me into the most welcoming community I've ever experienced, and for that, I am grateful. Still, after connecting with religion, I never believed in God. That was the case until we went through a certain exercise during a senior seminar during March. As a group, we looked at a comparison of how Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 try to answer the question, why do human beings exist? Before we explored this question, Rabbi Conover asked us to write down a few ideas about our beliefs in God. For a few seconds, I, thought that I sat there feeling very perturbed. I remember having a tiring day and the last thing I wanted to do was tackle one of the largest concepts in religion. Time seemed to slow down as I struggled to put my beliefs into words. I didn't even want to acknowledge that there could be something bigger than I know in this world. I'm a realist and very independent, which is why I've always disliked the idea of relying on something that is not even tan tangible to take care of my life. Still staring into space, I decided to stop being hard on myself and just let my thoughts flow onto the, onto the legal pad in front of me. With about five minutes, I was able to construct this vision of God. God is not a man, not a woman, not even a li living, breathing being. To me, God is an energy. This energy comes from people in numbers. When calling upon God, I am not calling to the man with a long white beard. I'm calling for the positive energy from this congregation, congregation, my neighborhood, my friends, and my family, some of which could very well be men with white beards, just not the one in the sky. One of the most dominant places where I feel this energy is at Temple Shalom. Here I am uplifted by the energy or by the clergy, staff, congregation, my peers, and teachers alike. The energy that all of these people exude is how God comes through in my life. I know that I will always have this community to fall back on, which gives me great comfort as I move forward to the next phase of my life. This fall, I will be attending the University of Connecticut through the Honors and Law Program. 
There, I will join the Hillel alongside the numerous friends I've already made through my journey to college this far. I look forward to joining this new community, for I know that it will be as welcoming as Temple, Temple Shalom was to me at a time when I felt so lost within my own identity. Thank you. We're really proud of you, Eleanor. Thank you. Yes, we're so proud of you and we feel so uplifted by you. So thank you. Thank you for sharing those words and for being such an important part of our community. Um, we now call up Ethan Oredi to share some of his words. Hi. Okay. So Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Uh, as many of you may not know, uh, I'm a big soccer fan, especially the team Liverpool. Liverpool's coach once said, uh, when I left Dortmund, I said, it's not important what people think of me when I come in, but how they think of me when I leave. Now as a senior graduate, I'm reflecting my time at Temple Shalom. My connection to Temple Shalom started at my bris when Rima Kodesh held me for most of it. She was my first preschool teacher and one of my favorite memories for preschool is when she drove me to school one day. I got in Shalom whether in Erica's class, learning Hebrew with Helena or helping Heidi, I learned how to enjoy Judaism. The singing, the challah baking, the stories, the beam of time gave me a supportive community for Judaism that I brought and gave me a solid foundation that I brought to Solomon Schechter and continues to grow today. This experience relates to what we've been learning in senior seminar. Why do we exist? Should we live for the achievements or the experience? Or in other words, do we live for our resume or our eulogy? Sometimes I think you should strive for all of those, but I prefer to have more of an emphasis on living for the experience in your eulogy and not just your resume. I don't wanna be so focused on the goal that I miss the lessons and the enjoyment that I can have along the way. So I asked myself, what is a valuable experience? For me, it became clear that helping others and making the world a better place would make my life more meaningful. I only, if I only focus on the final goal, what would I have after that? It's the experience along the way that gives your life purpose. One of my favorite teachings from, from senior seminar was the story of Israel Salanter. He wanted to change the world, but he realized he couldn't. So he tried to change his country, but he realized he couldn't. Then he tried to change his state, and he realized he couldn't, and so on and so on. Eventually, he learned that if he changed himself, he would in turn help change his family, which could help change his neighborhood, which could help change his, his country and his state, and so on. In actuality, he discovered that making himself a better person could have endless positive ripple effects. Reminded, reminds me of my bubby when she says courtesy is contagious, especially when driving. I found this true for myself. Uh, my experience at Gan Shalom and Temple Shalom uh, have given me a greater sense of purpose. So I wanna give back to the community that has given me so much. You see, my Gan experience continues uh, even after I graduated. Each summer I come back to work with Erica. I saw, and I saw that um, teaching the kids the, uh, the joy of Jewish, preschool changes them and makes their parents happier and makes my community better. I now realize that these, that these experiences I was creating for myself and the students were more important than me just building my resume. They were becoming my part of my life's journey. So like Jurgen Klopp said, I don't know what the teachers of Gan Shalom thought of me when I started, but I hope as I'm leaving the summer and off to college that they'll think that I helped them along the way by giving the new students love of Judaism that will continue from door to door. And like Israel Salanter said, that'll pass, and, they'll, and I hope they'll pass it on and on and on until we change the world. Amen and Yashir Koach. We know that you've been such a great teacher both tonight and for all, for so many students in our community. And we appreciate you so much. And we now call up finally all of our graduates for a special blessing um, so that we can just tell you how proud of you we are and how much we love you. Okay, so Esther, if you'll unmute yourself here. I'm gonna say just a few words to our seniors first. Good. So if we could just highlight, uh, spotlight, uh, Ethan, who has, uh, has Jody Moradi um, as, his, as his title tonight, um, and Eleanor Gelb, and Isabel Rosa. So here, I'll have to highlight these amazing 
And then, um, and Roseth, let's see, and Isabel, um, I didn't see what name she's under, but it'll give people more time to be able to share um, their gratitude with these seniors for their incredible wisdom. Here we are. All right, perfect. So seniors, you are so wise. And also you, you have this way of being able to help us to affirm what we feel like we know, but we haven't seen it come to life <clears throat> quite as much as we would like it to in this world. So in short, you give us hope. Um, and you don't give us hope because you have to say these great things. You give us hope just by you being you. So let me just say that you've chosen this amazing time to be able to uh, graduate or receive Torah um, on this evening, because this is Bami Bar, which means in the wilderness. But if we see, this is the formation for how the Jews structured themselves around Torah as they wandered through the wilderness. So they didn't quite wander, they had a sense of purpose, and they also had a sense of being able to protect what was at their center. If there's anyone who knows how to do that, it's the three of you. Let me say this. There are these three inner groups, the Kohathites, the Merarites, and the Gershonites, who are all very close to the, the center of the, the covenant. And what do they do with the Pact of the Covenant or that Holy of Holies, that Mishkan, that uh, tabernacle that they take throughout the desert? Well, each of them has a special role. So let me just say a couple of words to each of you with a special role that I think you play. So I wanna start with you, Isabel. Isabel, there are the Kohathites. And what do the Kohathites do? But they are in charge of the sacred vessels that are in the, in the tabernacle. So the Ark of the Covenant and the, 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 the shoe bread table. And I wanna just share with you that what I think that you do so beautifully, Isabel, is that you ask the most incredible questions and you also pay attention to the answers and then you offer your own after you listen so beautifully. I think that that's what we have to do when we wanna be able to find wisdom from those sacred objects. It's not the objects themselves, it's what we try to wrest from them. So with the shoe bread, we think about how we have to look at one another before we can ever break bread with each other. What a gift. That's what you do. And also, we have to make sure that when we look at the covenant, when we look at our Torah, that we rest from it all these gems of wisdom. That's you, Isabel. You are somebody who looks for depth in every situation. You ask the most amazing questions. And I love the way that you listen, not only for others' answers, but also so that you, when you speak, we all listen so closely because you have so much to share. And Eleanor, I want to say that you, to me, are a little bit like the Gershonites. The Gershonites were in charge of the curtains. They were those who were brave enough both to set up the curtain and to peek back the curtain, to be able to say that life is only worthwhile if we truly examine it. Eleanor, you have such a deep soul that you showed with us tonight. You are ready to pull back that curtain to be able to explore life's biggest questions. Wow. I pray that you always have that courage to peel back and search out more, to be able to see the depth in every situation and to see just where you fit in. You're amazing. And Ethan. Ethan, there are also the Merarites. And who are the Merarites? But they are the ones who set up the structure of the Mishkan, of the tabernacle. They're the ones who actually carry the poles. They do the schlepping, but they schlep with purpose. And what I love about you, Ethan, is that I've known you since you were so little. And to see the way in which you have always been able to get to the essence of life, meaning this, you get to the structures in order to see the majestic beauty in them. You see that actually these structures that we've given you through Temple Sholem and Gan Shalom, they have so much life in them. And there you are exploring it 
And there you are teaching all of us. You don't only teach the children who go to Gan Shalom, you teach the teachers at Gan Shalom. You teach the rabbis and the clergy and the cantor here at Temple Sholem. And we are grateful for all the ways in which you help to set a foundation for all of us in, in our most important pieces of Judaism. And that Eleanor, you're the one who's setting up those curtains and peeking and pulling them back and seeing where can we find more clues to how to live a meaningful life. And then Isabel, there you are being able to see what's right at the center. What do we have as far as the wisdom in the Torah? The three of you work together with others of our seniors that we're going to hear from next week. And the way that you all work together is the way that we see that we have a sacred community, not just here, but one that's going to follow you wherever you go because you're gonna create that sacred community with the work of your hands and the love in your heart. And so with that, we're grateful to be able to bless you with a threefold benediction. So now we're gonna invite our other clergy and Esther and Jay to join us here with you as we bless you with a threefold benediction. So I like to do this version. I especially love it when we're all together, which seems like it's going to be happening very soon. But tonight, our way of staying connected is by using this term, may it be God's will, may it be so. We say, Cain, Yehi, Ratzon. And Esther, you can kind of double me on this call or not if there's something uh, barking or meowing in the background or you just don't want to sing. Here we are. All right. But we're all going to put our hands up for you. And everybody at home can answer and sing along by saying, Kenya We invite everyone to help us bless our, our graduates here. So feel free to lift your hands in blessing. May God bless you and protect you. I Adonai Panna Belecha Vichuneka. Can you hear our song? May God's light shine on you and feel close to you. I Adonai Panna Belecha Vichuneka. Can you hear our song? May you feel a divine presence in your life lifting you always, and may that bring you peace. Amen. Can you hear our song? We love you, seniors. We love you, seniors. We're so, so proud. Not only are we proud of you, graduates, we deeply respect you, and we are grateful for all your teaching all your wisdom and all your light. Thank you. And as we um, say that we'll see you for a bit right after this service, then now what we'll be able to do is share with all of us some announcements about what's coming up next on our calendar because Shavuot is coming. Woo! This Saturday night, we are so excited to have a cross community, cross denominational virtual Havdalah, followed by a Shavuot rabbinic panel. So this is Saturday at 9 p.m. Um, and it's going to feature our awesome and incredible Rabbi Conover, along with Rabbis David Wolkenfeld, Craig Marins, um, Ezra Bilzer, Dror Chankin, Lizzie Heideman, and Frederick Reeves. And you can register through with Anshay Emmett's website. It should be a lot of fun. And I, I can hardly wait. 
I'm almost as excited for that as I am for our adult education on Sunday morning, which is going to be Jews in American politics with Dr. Fred Lazen, Professor Emeritus from Ben Gurion University. And so we're going to hear about the changing status of Jews in American politics. I think we're also going to hear some a little bit about the Pew report um, that just came out um, this past week, um, and to be able to hear some analysis about Jews and politics and how how that's shifting um, from in the past to till, till today. But then what's going to be so fun is that Cantor and Rabbi Singer, we get to see so many people who are here tonight later that afternoon on Sunday. Right. Cantor, can you tell us a little bit about that? Shavuot, are you speaking of Shavuot at Lincoln Playground, perhaps? I sure am, although I don't know it's going to be the playground as much as the park area there. Okay. Because we're going to have a area. lot of adults there. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna find us. Trust me, you you won't you won't be lost, and we'll all be gathering at three thirty p.m. this Sunday, May sixteenth, um, for ice cream, a little shofar choir, an interactive Torah reading, and we're all gonna be there. So it's the place to be. And then if you're still looking for us and wanting more of Shavuot, I'm gonna want more too. Monday morning. May 17th at 10.30 a.m. This is important. Um, those of you who know, I'm constantly obsessively talking about all the different times of year that we observe our festival holidays. This is one of our Yisker opportunities to um, observe the memorial and observe all of the, our loved ones um, that have come before us, that Lador Vador. So please join us for our, our festival morning service that includes our memorial service as well. And then anybody want to mention next week what's happening? Yes, next Shabbat, we get to do another incredible continuation of our graduation Shabbat, um, get to hear from more of our incredible seniors. And we look forward to hear it to seeing you there. And in the meantime, we can rise in body and in spirit and turn to page 586 for Aleinu L'Shabeach. Alenu le shabeach la don ha kol la teit kiru la leotse breshit shalo asanu ke goye haratzot velo samanu ke mishpachot adama shalo sam chelkenu kahem vegor alenu ke kol hamonam vanachnu koim umishtachavim umodim lifne melech mache hamlachim. Hakadosh Baruch Hu V'nemar V'hayarunai L'melech Al Kol Haaretz V'yom Ha'hu V'yom Ha'hu Y'hayarunai Echad U'shmo 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 Echad We take a moment now to think of those whose lives have been lost in the last week, in the last month, in the last year, from age, from illness, from senseless violence. If you'd like to take a moment to share a name out loud, please feel free to do so or type those names in the chat. Richard Tepper. Pearl Bildner. Judith Goodsells. We add to those names Daryl Hatter, Eleanor Goldman. Laura Schreiner, Dr. Susan Sipes, Margaret O'Donohue, Howard V. Hone, Sandra Goincher, the Palestinians who were killed in the last few days. Um, we also add to those names and also the Israelis killed by senseless violence. We add to those names, Paul Peters, Barbara Fox, Stephanie Myers, Judith Getzels, Dr. Eugene L. Bronstein, Claire Moses, Whitney Maester O'Connell, Barbara Keller Taylor, 
Charles Raisin, Barry Huber, Harry B. Stone, Marvin Mindies, Rose Septo, Philip Katzman, Lillian Hendel, Florence Levine, sorry, Florence Levine, Diana F. Barish, Stanley Gluck, Iris Chopin, Bernie Zeitlin, Lynn Lippin, Sydney Schreiber, Ellen Saper Thomas, Burton Olin, Ruth Geller Names, Robert Ellenwood, Justin Rosenfeld, Jamie Dordek, Mary Vaughn Sias, Keith Meister, Jordan Joseph Popkin, Doris Finkel Peltz, Harriet Mashkies, Anush Taub, Michael Block, Sue Wolf, Florence Jack, Jer and Jerry Aker, as well as Rebecca Luker. May their memories be for a blessing. We rise and turn to our mourners' kaddish. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei raba v'yalma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael v'agalau v'zman kari v'imru. Amen. Yehi shemei raba mevarach li'olam u'lalmei almaya. Yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnase v'yitadar v'yitalev v'yitalal shemei d'kudusha le'ila min kol berchata v'shirata tushbechata v'nechamata d'amiran v'yalma b'imru Amen. Yehi shlam araba min shemaya v'chayim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru Amen. Ose shalom v'mramav v'yase shalom Aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. O sel shalom v'mromav, hu yase shalom aleinu, v'al kol Yisrael v'imru, imru. Amen. Rabbi Singer, you want to know something special? I do. I actually love to hear other people sing and word paint, especially when they are beautiful souls like our dear Jay Rappaport. So Jay, um, for all of us, would you share these words uh, of Josh Nelson, these words of generation to generation for our incredible graduates that I'm so ridiculously proud of along with the rest of our rabbis. Can't hear you yet. There. We are gifts and we are blessings. We are history and song. We are hope we are healing we are learning to be strong we are words and we are stories we are pictures of the past we are carriers of wisdom not the first and not the last the door of our door Nagid God Lacha, the door of our door, we protect this chain from generation to generation. The door of our door, these lips will praise your name. Looking back, on the journey that we carry in our heart from the shadow of the mountain to the waters that would part we are blessed and we are holy we are children of your way and the words that bring us meaning we will have the strength to say the 
Door by door, Nagid God Lecha. Door by door, we protect this chain. From generation to generation, the door by door, these lips will praise your name. Mazel Tov, seniors, we love you. We love you, Jay. We love you, rabbis. Thank you, graduates. Shalom. Thank God for this community. Shabbat, Shabbat shalom. shalom.